You hear? Let me out! I'll talk, I'll squeal, but please, let me out! Look how it shakes. It's impossible. It's just ridiculous. Go, oh, call construction. Bobby, call back to construction. And the painter! Stay right here! So do you understand what I mean? You are in for life. There, there's no way out. So just be panicky, be hysterical. And don't be afraid. Scream. Ah! You know? He's quite a hand. Are you kidding? He was a big star in Europe. It's all right. Nobody has to hold him. You mean Darwin? Sure. Here he played bits. Just nothing. Guess you have to know the right people. No, no, don't put it there. What did you do, go out with a casting director? Don't you know he's married to Charles Lester's daughter? He's Continental's a charmer. Married right into the movie empire. Now he's a big shot. Co-producer, director. Hey, don't do that. You want someone to fall and break his neck? Who was their insured? No. Try to lie again. Mister, I'm an honest salesman. This stuff comes from bankruptcies, fire sales. All right. Buck in the hat. Just to have a sale for today. And... And you, miss, I got a, a, a beautiful coat, just your size, two, two, 12. You want me to show you? And this here is to be locked. Okay? See? It needs a shine, so it looks like real iron bars. Understand? Sure, a little shellac will do. That'll dry fast with a hot lamp. Let's go, boys. I'll hurry it up. Can I get some hot coffee? It looks like it needs a little fixing right here. Mm -hmm. Well, that can be fixed. No extra charge. It's very nice. How much is it? The original price was 90 bucks, so help me. For you, it's 50. Well, I can only spare about 20 bucks now. Well, that's all right. Any arrangement you want, just give me your name and address, and I'll come <laughs> to your house to collect. Uh, is five bucks a week all right? Well, maybe 10, maybe more. It depends how business is. And the name and address? Sherry Stewart. Excuse me, Mr. Darman. Could you turn around for a minute, please? Yeah, what is it? It's a layout for a magazine with an article about your type of picture. What is my type of picture? Bad ones? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Darman, I've got a little complication. That girl who was supposed to do the bit in the waiting room, well, she had to take her mother to the hospital emergency. She won't be able to make it. Mm, that's not so tragic. There must be somebody around who can speak a few lines. Well, let me see. Miss! No, not you. The other one. Me? Uh, would you kindly come here? Don't be afraid. Quite a dame, huh? Mm. <laughs> Can you learn a few lines during lunch hour? You mean in the movie? To speak lines? Sure I could. I think she looks all right. Mm, it doesn't matter. She, she's a gun mall visiting her friend in the prison. If she's good, she gets a nice close-up. Gee, thanks, Mr. Darman. Bob! Yes, sir? Give her the lines and tell Leonard to help her with the dialogue. Okay, good. Now, this is your part, the visiting girl. Let me see. One, two, three lines. And good ones. Wow, I'm so excited. Hey, you get all the credit, huh? <laughs> How is it drying? I think we should break for lunch. Mm -hmm. One hour lunch, two half hours. May I have an outside line, please? Guess what? I've got a part. No, with lines. And good lines. And I'll get a close-up, too. Ah, baloney. It's always the same. These big things and then nothing. Look, honey, will you just stick to modeling instead of making a fool out of yourself? Oh, you idiot. Why did I have to call you in the first place? Oh, shut up, stupid. Okay, okay. I'll show you. Hey, mister, the old lady fainted. Hey, mister, the old lady fainted. 
First she cried and said something about her son being executed in a week, and then she fainted. First she cried and said something about her son being executed in a week, and then she fainted. Quiet, please. This is a rehearsal. Give us a bell. Silence. Get out of there. That's not a take. We have time later. All right. So, you, Mrs. Uh, Fraser. Mrs. Fraser, you know, after action, you faint. Yeah? And you, Miss... Uh, Stewart. Miss Stewart, I told you. Uh, don't forget to hit your mark. Yeah? Yeah. Now, let's try it. Silence. Action. Hey, mister, the old lady fainted. Wait a moment. How do you know that she fainted? You didn't even look at her. I'm sorry. First, let her faint, then look at her, realize that she fainted, then give me an expression, then come forward, hit your muscle blades then, and then talk. Look, the microphone is here. We can't pick you up if you start there. Let's go back. Silence, please. Now let's try again. Action. Hey, mister, the old lady fainted. What? The first she cried and said something about her son being executed in a week. Oh, yes, that's Camille's mother. And then she fainted. <clears throat> Look. Look, Miss... Uh, Stewart. Miss Stewart, you're in a big closet. I want to see something in your eye. It's not just waiting for a cue and then saying the lines, you know? You have to project. You have to show me that you feel pity for this woman, that you do something, you know? Some Fine. emotion. And watch your pronunciation. Once again. What's wrong with my pronunciation? <clears throat> All right, silence. What is it? Don't you feel well or what? Oh, no, it's fine. All right, so let's go. Silence. Go. Hey, mister, the old lady fainted. First she cried and said... I forgot the line. Excuse she me. said something about her son being executed in a week. Oh, yes. Uh, that her son would be executed in a week, and then she fainted. Sorry, I forgot to wait for the cue. Don't take it so hard, kid. It's not worth it. That idiot. He just confused me on purpose. I knew what I was doing. Shh, not so loud. Jerk. Who does he think he is? He just dismisses me like a dog. I'm in front of all those stupid dames. Do you want to get thrown off the set? I don't care. <laughs> Look at it. It's fun. Laugh. Great director. Where would he be without his father-in-law? Cut it out. You out of your mind? What does he want me to do with three lousy lines? I wasn't doing so badly before he started picking on me and confusing me. Can you hold it for one shot? There's his wife. That's Charles Lester's daughter. Yeah. These continental phonies and their hand-kissing business. Some women are stupid and fall for it. Huh. Oh, you're nuts. Don't say that. I'm allergic to it. Leon, remind him to be home on time. We have guests to dinner. Yes, ma'am. Scene 202, take one. Action. Hey, mister, the old lady fainted. What? Well, first she cried a little and then said something about her son being executed in a week. Oh, yes, that's Camilla's mother. Then she fainted. Cut and print. Wonderful. You've seen one take. Darling, you're a great actress. <laughs> look at that fuss he makes. Just to humiliate me. To make me look ridiculous. Oh, that, that sloppy genius. I'd like to kick his teeth out. Don't get so excited, darling. It's not so important. Oh, I hate him. Calm down, dear. I thought you did it very well. I liked it. You did? 
You see? I needed that first break so badly. Every casting director, every producer asked if you got a piece of film on you. That was it. I needed that film. And that swine had to spoil it for me. Oh, I could kill him. And I'm not joking. Hi, Sherry. So, what happened? Did they sign you up to a long-term contract? You shut up, you... Get out of here, all of you! Can you barbecue another place for a change? Good night, Sherry. Don't get hysterical. I knew it. Oh, sure, sure, you knew it. You certainly weren't much of an encouragement. Look, honey, why don't you face it? Maybe you really don't have any talent. I've got more talent than all those over-publicized dames. Only they find the right guys, and I have to have the, the bad luck to run into such a sexist idiot. That son-in-law of a father-in-law, that's all he is. But I'll show him. That, that monster. Oh, you're crazy. So I'm crazy! Let me go! You told me to grab you every time you get a stir. All right, I'm all right now. Let me go. Come here and sit down. You're a smart guy. I've got an idea. Nothing big. Just an idea. On how to break his neck. The movie industry has been through crises for years and years. First the talkies, then color pictures. Three dimensions. Cinerama, cinemascope. Tomorrow it'll be something else. But whatever comes, good pictures will survive. Just as good theater has survived, or good books. Father's an old optimist. Always. Look, I don't wear suspenders, and I don't wear a belt either. <laughs> but look at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what does it prove? I'll bet you that old sourpuss of a husband of yours wears both. Stand up a minute. See? A pessimist. Always afraid he'll lose his pants. <laughs> Oh, that's an old joke. I heard it last week on television. My dear, that joke is a good deal older than television. <laughs> what is it? A lady on the phone. Who is she? She didn't give her name. She says it is very urgent. How did you get my phone number? What is it, Walter? A mystery woman. Tell her to call my office tomorrow morning. She sounds very excited, sir, and asked me to tell you she must speak to you. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. Hello? Mr. Diamond, I hate to call you this late, but I've got to talk to you. I'm waiting just outside of your house, around the corner, in a light gray Chevy. Please trust me and come. It's very important. I mean, for you. What is it all about? Hello? 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 Aren't you the girl who just called me? Yes, come inside, quick. What is it all about? Aren't you the girl who was on the set today? What are you doing here? Well, Mr. Darman, it may sound strange to you, but I came to warn you. I had to. To warn me of what? Well, maybe it'll sound like a lot of nonsense to you, but I overheard my cousin talking. He's an extra. To some fellows the other day about a compromising letter that you were supposed to have written to a girl. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know, but well, maybe some years ago. I couldn't get the whole story. It was just that I figured out that they wanted to use it. To blackmail you, I mean. If they find out that I came to warn you, they'd beat me up. I'm even afraid that...
you don't believe me. I can see it. You think I made up the whole story. Now, listen, you little... I don't know what you're after, but you better disappear. But quick, before I call the police. Nobody was around, huh? Good timing. Maybe he didn't see our performance at all. No worry, he saw it. He just stood there with his face hanging out. Maybe he's smart. But I'm smarter. <laughs> Operator, give me the police station, please. The trouble is that we're in the public eye too much. A baker or a dentist or insurance man marries, divorces, drinks, is involved in scandals. But the public doesn't care. But we movie people are being watched. That's why we must try to keep out of headlines, away from bad publicity. Um, never mind. Uh, thank you. I'll drive there. It's, it's quicker. Thank you. My name, thank God, has never been involved directly or indirectly in any scandal. What is it, Walter? Something happened? Nothing. A hysterical little actress. She tries for a big part this afternoon. Uh, let's not talk about it. Can I have a little fresh coffee? Oh, of course. There are some drugs, some crooks who keep the bad reputation alive. Bob? Did I wake you up? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, listen, do you have by any chance the phone number of that uh, started blonde girl, you know, who tried for... No, the other one. Uh, yeah, I think I have it right here on the call sheet. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Sherry Stewart. Hillside 5, 7800. And she lives at 3457 North Carpenter Drive. Uh-huh. Not at all, boss. Thanks. Good night. <laughs> Hello. This is Walter Darman speaking. Are you Sherry Stewart? Yes, what do you want? Are you safe? Uh, what happened? Uh, what did they do to you? Oh, don't worry about it. They just beat me up a little, that's all. Why don't you leave me alone? Uh, Miss Stewart, please, you must forgive me. I didn't mean to offend you, but the whole story, you know, it sounded so, <laughs> so absurd, so I... Uh, let me make up for it. Look, I feel it's my duty to protect you against these fools. Maybe I should have them arrested. No, no, please don't. Uh, I took care of everything. I gave the guy some dough. <laughs> but I mean, this is ridiculous, then let me pay you back. How much was it? No, thanks. I wouldn't take anything from you. You might suspect me of some tricks again. Ještě to pevně, klepe se vám ruka. Stop, to stačí. That's a wrap up, folks. Thank you very much. There's a little party on the set tonight, just a few drinks. Seven o'clock and everybody's invited. Hi, Sherry. Boy, you look sharp. Hi. 
I just came from a party with some big shots. Thought I'd drop by and see how you're getting along. Why don't you join us? I have my friends here. They're better than we are. Yeah? All right, that's good. <laughs> Want to sit there with me? Yes. So come on over. Yeah, he's alone. His wife isn't here. Who? Oh, don't give me that. I know what's going on. Nah, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. <laughs> now you're not getting cut. Give us another bottle, yeah? Why don't you go over there? It'll do you good. Yeah, what makes you think I'm interested in that phony? Well, didn't he call you the other night? Look, it's none of my business, but... Uh... Well, yeah, but just apologize for that stupid thing, that's all. Oh, yeah. Have a cigarette? They don't give me a glass. Take it easy, boss. That's four in a row. Don't go so fast. Ah, shut up. Where's your wife? Shut away for the babysitter. Huh? Walter, to your help. Thank you, Sam. Thank Where's you. your lady? Ah, uh, went with her father to Palm Springs for the weekend. Well, have a good time. I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> I can see white mice already. <laughs> Have a little black coffee. That'll fix you up. way to celebrate the finish of your picture. Oh, hello. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I feel a little busy. You know, I'm not used to drink. <laughs> Say, you're beautiful. You like a movie star, maybe? <laughs> and all these in black. It's my favorite color. Come on, let's dance. All right. <laughs> I'm a very bad dancer. <laughs> Good night, Sam. Good night. Good night. See you. Good night, boss. See you Take tomorrow, huh? Yeah. Take care of yourself, boss. And no more drinks. <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm glad I got out of it. Good night. Good night, boss. Give me a glass of soda, huh? Somebody? Yes. My girlfriend was supposed to have taken me home. I guess she must have forgotten. So what? I take you. It will be good for me. A little fresh air, that's exactly what I need, huh? Yes, but... Oh, don't be afraid. I'm sober. Want to give me a test? Yes, let's try. Huh? What's my name? <laughs> Sherry... No, you got me. Sherry... Oh, I... wait, wait. I... Uh, Stevens. Stewart, Mr. Darman. Sherry Stewart. Remember that name. Oh, I think I went too far. That's all right. I'll use a back entrance. That's for bringing me home. Thank you. Good night. Good night. And sleep well. Why did you come through the back porch? Well, what's the difference? Why don't you stay for a while? All right. My family's out of town. I'm not in a hurry. Just for an eye cat, a short one. Fine. Sit down. I'm not a coward. Oh, I love your place. 
It smells here of incense, some kind of a forbidden flavor. Mm. <laughs> what are you going to have? Oh, I'll have something sweet. A little sherry. Mm. Sherry for sherry, huh? <laughs> Clever. To your picture. It should make a lot of money. You know, my father-in-law thinks that I'm too arty, that my pictures don't appeal to the public. Ah, oh, what does he know? Come on, drink up. I liked you before when you were a little tipsy. What did I do? Oh, you were a little more aggressive. And it, it's very becoming to a man of your, shall I say, intellect. Nah, you shouldn't offend people in your home. <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Don? Don't you feel well? I feel horrible. I think I, sh I sh shouldn't drink anymore. Oh, come on. Don't be a bad sport. One more won't kill you. Come, oh. come. Great man. Ronnie, I've got him here. Sure, he's fast asleep like a baby. Be here about nine o'clock tomorrow morning. All right. Do you feel dizzy in the morning? Do you suffer from headaches, hangovers? Go to your nearest drugstore and ask for Feel Fine. Economy size miracle tonic, Feel Fine. And now, Malts of the Tulips by Ernest Gold. Oh, you're up already? <laughs> Say, you snore like a whole regiment. I couldn't sleep for a second. Why do you look unhappy? That isn't very much of a compliment. You brute. Oh, we'd better do something about that lipstick on your shirt and your face. See, you'd be in trouble. Well, it is happen. Oh, trying to play an amnesia victim? How did this happen, huh? And this? Come in. Oh, pardon me. You've got company. Well, that's all right, darling. Meet Mr. Darman. Walter Darman, director and producer. He just came in to offer me a part. You're looking for your shoes, darling, down under the couch. Be right back, boy. Oh, don't feel embarrassed, Mr. Darman. Jerry and I are just good friends. Pals, no attachments whatsoever. What's the matter, Mr. Darwin? Don't you feel well? Mm, I don't know. Maybe I need some fresh air. I feel so. Where's my... Hey, let me help you. Thank you. That, uh, Sherry's quite a rough dame, huh? <laughs> you look like a frightened schoolboy. I can't understand. How could this happen? Uh, wh what time is it? It's five to nine. Oh, that's terrible. Where are my shoes? Don't worry about me, Mr. Darwin. I'll keep my mouth shut. I know a lot of little scandals. I never mention them. For instance, you know Fowler, the casting director at Corner Studios? Well, he's got a very jealous wife. 
And he got mixed up with Claire Duval, the little French actress. Oh, gee, what a mess. His wife wanted to shoot her. So the girl wanted to kill herself anyway. So? <laughs> I can't say it would have made too much of a difference. Oh, you're dressed already? Turn around and I'll try to get it out for you. I think I should be going because uh, they will be looking for me. Oh, is your wife back in town? Well, I hope not. It would be terrible. Say, uh, Mr. Darman, you're quite a big shot. I read quite a bit about you. You think there'd be a chance for me to get a job? Something very easy. Oh, cut it out, Ronnie. Walter's not in the mood to discuss your problems now. Have you got a Coke in the icebox? Why don't you look? You don't worry about the dress, darling. Fortunately, there's one right near the lace, and I can fix it myself. I better go. Call me again sometime. And drop in when your family's out of town. Okay? I'll, uh, I'll call you. Hi, Mr. Diamond. I almost feel sorry for that guy. I don't. All I can tell you, if you're going to marry him, I'll leave this house. Oh, won't you like him? No. He likes you very much. I know. Oh, please, Mother, don't play naive. You know what I mean. Well, this is film that I'm catching on. Now, look, Carl, I tell you something. For instance, here, you know, she jumps on her line so much that it has no meaning because it's too short. I think all the pauses are missing. Well, I showed it to Mr. Lester yesterday, and he suggested cutting it even more. Oh, he saw it? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I think it still drags a little. Uh, let's continue. Oh. What gives you the idea? Well, I don't know. Maybe you should know. I ran the whole picture twice, just to make sure I'm not doing you any injustice. I even talked it over with the projectionist. Everybody's opinion is valuable. I admit there are some artistic shots. But in general, it's a dull picture. I'm sorry, but there's no beating about the bush when big money is involved. Maybe you should have assigned it to somebody else. Maybe I'm too continental for this type of story, as you like to say. Wait, Walter. Father never said such things with a bad intention. That might even be meant as a compliment. Every time we have these arguments, Walter, you put on the expression of a martyr. You've been in America long enough to catch out of the public's taste. The public's taste is much higher than you would expect. Excuse me for saying it, but it seems to be easier to make pictures for kids and imbeciles, making little delinquents of a whole generation. The poor adults have to sit through it and suffer. Always the same story, the same characters, the same happy ending. It's just ridiculous. What's the use of arguing? I'm going to do everything possible to save my investment. I talked to Fred and Seymour. They're going to rewrite a few scenes, you're going to reshoot them, and we'll save the picture. Just like that. And who is going to tell us what's right and what's wrong? Why don't you sneak the picture first? Well, ah, that's not the answer. For every intelligent producer, director, and sneak preview is a nightmare. These kids love off every intelligent thought, every decent emotion, every sentiment, just because they want to play tough. Everybody's a critic. After the preview, they rush into the lobby and write 50 cards. It stinks. Throw it to the birds. In other words, which the brain of his wouldn't pass. You're a hopeless case, Walter. I'm getting sick and tired of arguing. I'm an old timer. I know something about picture making. And I can give you a practical, quick recipe for a good motion picture. Take a handful of sex, mix it with violence, Give it some comedy relief, give it the right timing, and a happy ending, and you can't miss. Good night. Walk to the door with you. Come, Walter, don't let him go like this. Now look what you've done. I try so hard to keep peace between you two. You know, Carl, if he could get some train whistles, noises, I mean, night moves, something like this, you know? I've got a terrific loop prepared. You want to hear it? Sure. Oh, that's another one. Yeah, this is it. Well, there's a gentleman to see you, Mr. Darman. Hi, Walter. 
Am I disturbing you? Oh, hello. Who are you? Don't you remember me? Ronnie, Sherry's friend. Carpenter Drive. Don't you remember? Oh, yeah, sure. How are you? I was just over to see the casting director, so I thought I'd drop in, see what you're doing. It's nice of you. Say, why don't you give her a ring sometimes? She's such a nice kid. Poor girl feels hurt. Why, just the other day, she said. No, look, I, I'm so busy here, you know, preparing for dubbing and scoring. It's a lot of work. I understand. But, Wally, you could call her once in six weeks. Go on. Be a nice guy. Hello. How's it going? Hello, Mr. Lester. Oh, uh, hello, Charlie. How are you? I'll be right with you. Must excuse us. We have some business to talk over now. Oh, I understand. It's perfectly all right. Oh, Walter. By the way, can I see it for a second? Thanks, Wally. You're a real pal. I wouldn't bother if it wasn't an emergency. And don't forget to call her. She'll be tickled. Who's that repulsive character? Oh, <laughs> a bit player, an extra. He's coming once in a while to borrow some money. Well, you can't refuse these people. Is a shot in the card game scene? Uh, 34 feet. Made quite a difference in tempo. I'd already suggested it to Mr. Darman, but uh, he fell in love with the camera angle. Who said you should call? Didn't you hear me, Walter? Who will be tickled when you call? Oh, his girlfriend, she's an actress. He says that I promised her a part. I don't know about it. Uh, did you find the uh, medium shot? Oh, it uh, must be in this can. Oh, I'd give anything to have seen his face. I'm telling you, he was as pale as a sheet of paper. Scary, huh? Like a little boy. Tell me again, what did you say to him? Oh, he just casually said, don't forget to call her. But she'll be tickled. Are you sure the old man can hear you? I'm telling you, his eyes popped out. He looked like an owl. Fine. I'll give him about two more weeks to give him false hope that everything is fine and dandy. And then... So you are a tough one, aren't you? When I make up my mind, I... What would that be? Oh, today's Friday. That's for five should come for his ten bucks. Do you have any change? Oh, I'll pay it back to you. Come in, Papasha. Good evening. Uh, sorry, I'm here again. <laughs> As usual. Here. Thanks. Good evening, young man. Hi. What's going on in the movie business? Oh, I uh, hear they're going to have some retakes on that uh, Darman picture next week. You didn't mention a thing. See, that would be a good idea for me to see him again. I better check with general casting and put me on call. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, come in from here. Let the prisoners come in and read them. They come down and then cut. All right. A little higher. Bob. Yes, sir. So this door is closed. On cue, all the women come in and step in front of the door. Understand? Hello, Mr. Darren. Oh, hello. What are you doing here? Just making a living. Keep going. I caught you a few times, but there was no answer. Now, don't give me that. I'm not the type that becomes a pain in the neck just because. I told you, right. I, I, I'll call you. You know you won't. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry Ron is becoming a customer of yours, but I have nothing to do with it. Just throw him out, that jerk. We're ready, Mr. Darman. Yes, coming. Set. Let's go. Yes? Miss Sherry Stewart on four. Oh, no, tell her I'm not here. She called twice while you were in conference. She says it's very urgent. Thank you. Hello? I'm sorry to bother you, Walter. You know I'm not in the habit of doing it. But I'm in trouble. What can I do for you? You don't seem to understand. Whatever you do for me, you do for yourself. I don't get it. What have I to do with it? You really don't want me to discuss it on the phone, do you? I'd hate to think that someone might listen.
Hello? Are you there? Don't you think it would be worthwhile to discuss it in person? I'll be there in about 30 minutes. It's no fun for me either. I mean, well, it's not my fault. And even if I don't pretend to be the little victim, it's... Well, you must admit that we're both to blame. Equally, at least. A woman is always the one to take the punishment. Nature is unjust, and so are men. They look hurt when something goes wrong. How should I feel? Now you just sit there like an offended virgin. Say something, for heaven's sake. I don't know what. Uh, what do you expect me to say? <laughs> I know what I can expect. So let's be realistic and talk about it. Let me at least make a decent exit into my retreat. How much? Now you sound like a horse dealer. All right. Let me answer you in the same way. 50,000. You're joking. Oh, sure, sure. I'm just in the mood for joking. What did you expect? To pay my fare back to Louisiana and to give me five bucks for expenses? Well, but I mean, 50,000. <laughs> where, where shall I get it? Your father-in-law has millions. He'd be very glad to help you out of a jam. You don't expect me to tell him. Why not? Men usually stick together in things like this. He'd do it gladly to help you avoid a scandal. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Be reasonable. Who is it? Today is Friday, Miss George. Did you forget? I said old studio about Vipasha. The screen door is open. Come in. Wait. I don't want to be seen here. Oh, sure. Why don't you just crawl under the bed? I'm in a hurry, Papasha. Well, it's all right. If you want to pay me next to, to Friday, I'll trust you. That's all right. I have the money right here. Okay. And I, I brought the three silk shirts for your boyfriend. He said you'd pay for it. Huh? idiot making passes everybody makes passes next time I won't even let him in what is it what are you staring at oh suspicious again playing tricks on you huh you are damn right your whole story is a cheap trick stupid unintelligent I never even touched you I couldn't have been that drunk that I would remember. You and your boyfriend. Aren't you ashamed? I have nothing more to say to you. Get out. <laughs> There's no reason to be so upset, Walter. Every picture is a new problem. Take it easy and relax. I've set a sneak preview for Wednesday at the Cosmopolitan. And we'll see what the public has to say. I don't think Walter's well. Maybe we should call a doctor. No, no, don't worry about me. I'm, I'm all right. Need a little rest. How about a light sedative? I took to phenobarbital just a little while ago. I don't think you should go to the sneak preview. It's nerve wracking. Well, that's the business. I think he ought to see and hear the reaction for himself. An ostrich policy isn't of much help. I live through it, I hope. Excuse me, telephone. For Mr. Dahmer. Who is it? Miss Stewart. Who is Miss Stewart? I don't know. Tell her I, I'm not... Oh, no, wait. Tell her... Uh, I'm sick and the doctor is here and you can't call me. Just a moment, Henry. I'll take it. No. Wait. Hello? Please don't call me here. No. 
No, I'm telling you. Of course I will. Look, I, I don't feel well. I have to call the doctor. So give me a chance. I'm telling you, I'll call you tomorrow. All right. But if not, I'll come to see you. He's cracking up. I don't know. Maybe you're going too far. You know, when you drive a guy like him to despair, you never know what he'll do. So what can he do, wise guy? Go to the police and spill it. <laughs> that coward? He wouldn't do such a thing. He's afraid of bad publicity. His father-in-law would throw him out. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry. Well, to squeeze him a little bit's okay with me. But how can you ever expect to get 50 grand? Now, isn't that just ridiculous? Because I want to see him fly. I want to see him go to pieces. That's because he didn't let you read a few lousy lines? Yes. Three lines. Three lousy lines. It would make all the difference in the world to me. How he humiliated me in front of all those idiots. I can still see their grinning faces. How he embraced that other girl. That phony snob. I wasn't good enough for three lousy lines. Don't get that in your face. I'll show him. I'll show him what an actress I am. No, you're nuts. Okay, so I'm nuts. Mm-mm. Money, I need you out of the way. You go to Mexico City, and I'll arrange everything. And meanwhile, you look for a little nightclub to buy. I'll be there soon, and we'll get married. What? We've got to, you big idiot. Walter? Hmm? Is it your differences with Father about the picture, or is there something else that troubles you? What else? Of course not. What gives you the idea? I don't know. All of a sudden, I thought perhaps you might be involved with somebody. Maybe because you never explain your mysterious phone calls. Nonsense. <laughs> Some ambitious little actress. Don't be angry. I, I had to ask for my peace of mind. Lucille, what will you do? if you'd find out something bad about me. I don't think I could ever forgive you. I'd lose my respect and admiration for you, and that would be the end. Thousand? Oh? All right, sell it. I need the money. Thank you, Gordon. Yes? The steward to see you. Uh, uh. I'm sorry, Walter. You must hate me. But you didn't call and you didn't come by like you promised. Maybe you expected me to commit suicide. Sorry, I'm not the type. Sit down. Tell me, why did you pick me of all the people? Pick you? For what? For all the trouble you're inventing. Look, if you want to, you can call your own doctor for an appointment. Anytime you wish. That doesn't prove a thing. Do you want to deny that you spent the night in my house? That I can't. You have a witness who came just on time. You're disgusting. So are you. All right. If you want to come out in the open, it's all right with me. I have nothing to worry about. I tried to avoid this little scandal for your sake. Come to think of it, it isn't a bad idea. Look what happened to Terry Saunders after that scandal with that schnook producer, Sidney, whatever his name is. She got a lot of offers from all the independents. And now she's a star. You'll figure out all the angles, huh? Miss Stewart, I can see through your game. I'm honest enough to put my cards on the table. I have a clear conscience. You know it. All I'm concerned about is my wife, whom I respect very much, and my father-in-law, who, who hates bad publicity. Maybe I'm a coward. Maybe I should go and... Oh, never mind. Look, let me out of your scheme. 
I've got about $16,000 in stocks. You can have it in a few days. Let me go, I'll scream. I'm sick and tired of your suspicions. I told you my price. What's the next step, Miss Stewart? Let me keep you in suspense, Mr. Don. Goodbye, Miss Stewart. Goodbye. Hello? The sneak preview? No, not Wednesday, Thursday. I'm at the Cosmopolitan Theater in Glendale. All right. The previous Thursday night at the Cosmopolitan in Glendale. And don't be a smart guy and do what I told you. Well, you are a determined girl, aren't you? Tell the boys I have some dough for them. When you leave for Mexico, sit in a couple of days. I have your tickets. Yes, General. <laughs> In all my 30 years of picture making, I never saw anything like it. All the laughs in the wrong places. That feeling of unrest throughout the picture. I never felt so terrible in my life. I should have taken the scissors myself instead of arguing with her stubborn, art-stricken genius and cut all the dragging meditations and psychological nonsense and deep ideas. But I'm telling you, it was all staged. There were some guys in the rear, some in the front, and some in, in the balcony. The public tried to shut them up. I talked to the manager. He said it was obvious. They must have been hired to make trouble. Hired? By whom? I don't know. By me, maybe, to prove my point? I don't know. Maybe. I'm through with you. Walter, I'm afraid that's the end. Father will never forgive you. And I don't blame him. I won't either. Didn't the phone ring a while ago? Yes, sir. It was for Mrs. Diamond. Uh, who was it? A lady, sir. She didn't give her name. What did you tell her? Why, she said it was very important, so I switched her to Mrs. Diamond's room. Good night, sir. Walter Diamond speaking. Why don't you leave my wife alone? 
What are you trying to do? Ruin me? Exactly, Mr. Darman. You are insane. Have me locked up in an insane asylum. There are other ways. You want to have me arrested? Go ahead. I warn you. Don't force me to the extreme. And what is the extreme, Mr. Darman? You want to kill me? You wouldn't have the guts. It would be bad publicity, and your father-in-law wouldn't like it. <laughs> That's beautiful. It can't be better. Yeah, I like it. I think I'll take it. And I'll need another traveling costume, but something exquisite. Good afternoon, Margaret. Good afternoon, Mr. Donovan. Is the movie all out here? Everything, all the reels. They even plugged it in just as you ordered. Mm, good. I don't want to be interrupted by anybody. No visitors, no phone calls. I just want to see the picture without any interruptions. Well, how about the cutter? Nobody, not even Mr. Lester. Uh, please order me a big container of hot coffee. Yeah? All right. Do you have a date tonight? No, why? Can you stay over time until I finish the picture? Of course I will. Thank you. Henry. Yes, Mrs. Darman. I'll be at Father's most of the afternoon. Tell Mr. Darman to have dinner without me. I may be delayed. Mr. Darman says he'll probably work late and eat something in the office. He says he'll run the whole picture for himself. All right, goodbye, Henry. Goodbye, Mr. Darman. I'm starting. Is that you, Papasha? 
What kind of a joke is this? Who is it? What do you want? Let me keep you in suspense, Miss Stewart. Hello, Mr. Diamond's office. Marion, can I get something cold to drink? Sure, Mr. Diamond. You look tired. Your eyes are red. Why don't you take a rest for a while? You've been at it for over an hour. Strain on your eyes. Mm, yes, my eyes hurt in my head. Did somebody call? Yes, here's a list of the people who called. The lab, Mr. Graham, your lawyer. Well, I think I need a little fresh air. I'll be right back. Hello? Beg your pardon? Oh, Mrs. Darman. No, he just stepped out for a moment. What? Mr. Darman, your wife just called. She... she... You calm down. What is it? She came to visit somebody and she found that person dead. Murdered. What? She's so upset, poor thing. She asked me to tell you to come over. It's... Oh, wait, I have it written down here. It's 3457 North Carpenter Drive. When did you see that guy last? He came here quite often. An elderly man wearing a round hat and a coat. Uh, carrying a large suitcase. You never talked to him? He tried to engage in conversation, but we avoided it. He looked so suspicious. He had a horrible grin on his face. Like an imbecile, I'd say. Exactly. And once, do you remember, Millie? He got fresh, and the poor girl had to chase him away. She threatened to call the police. I'm telling you, Inspector, that's him. Mrs. Diamond, how well did you know the girl? I didn't know her at all. I received a telephone call last night. She gave me her name and address and, and urged me to meet her. I, I usually don't accept this kind of an invitation, but, but she sounded so... What, uh... What do you mean you usually don't accept this kind of invitation? Do you get such calls often? Well, uh, occasionally there are some girls who want me to put in a good word for them to my husband and... To get in the pictures. Everybody wants to get in the pictures. Oh, Walter, I'm so glad you're here. Calm down, calm down. Mr. Darman? Yes, and this is my secretary, Miss Kelly. Inspector Collins. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Darman, did you know that your wife came to see Miss Stewart? No, I was busy running my picture, and my wife called the secretary and told her what happened. Mm. Uh, did you know Miss Stewart? I don't know. I can't recall the name. Let's take a look. Oh, I think she... she tried.
bride tore a bit part with my latest picture. Uh, she was an expert, you know. She came to see you, Mr. Darling, just a few days ago. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I see so many people. Oh, well, I can understand that. Can you recall by any chance what she wanted? Mm, a break. I'm sure as just any girl who comes to see me. That's probably why she wanted to see my wife. Mrs. Darman, can you recall by any chance what she... I mean, what was it that she said that made you think it so important to come to see her? Excuse me, Inspector. Would you mind if I bring my wife home? She doesn't feel well. Not at all. Thank you. What's the score, Johnny? Quite a refined murderer. Worked in gloves. Good morning, Mr. Collins. Uh, good morning, Mr. Diamond. I hope you don't mind. No, the girl told me you were here. How are you? Why don't you sit down? Oh, I just dropped in to ask a few questions. Go ahead. Oh. Tired? Yes. I had a terrible night. My wife, you know, she's so upset, poor thing. Just to quiet down, it was a great shock to her. You mean to find the body of a strangled girl? I can understand that. Things like that don't happen every day. Not even every second day. No, this is a darn clever thing. How does it work? It's for cutting movies, you know. The picture's on the right side and the sound is on the left. Hmm. And the pedals? Oh, the left is uh, for forward, the right is for backward. Uh, can it run by itself? Sure. There's a switch. Your secretary told me you were handling it yourself last night when your wife called. Hey, what's this? Gloves. Uh, you know, film is very delicate material. Uh, it scratches easily, so we, we are using gloves. Hmm. Well, to get back to the case. Now, the two neighbors told me that uh, Miss Stewart had a boyfriend. Did you know him? <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, is he in the business? A movie extra, among other things. Disappeared suddenly. Oh? Moved out of his apartment. Apparently left town. What's this? It's a door to the back lot. It's locked. Nobody uses it. Well, oh, uh, do you know a character named Papasha, or whatever they call him? Sure. He almost belongs to the studio inventory. <laughs> you know those two spinsters are uh, quite sure that he's a murderer? Uh, will you excuse me for a moment, please? Oh, sure, sure. Marion. Yes, Mr. Darling. Would you kindly call my house and ask for my wife, please? I'll do it right away. And tell the boys to pick up the film. Shouldn't you go inside? Maybe it's too cold for you here. The night air feels so good, just like a nerve massage. Was your father here to see you? Just for a little while. He had to leave. In order to avoid meeting me, huh? Inspector Collins called. I invited him over tomorrow to tell him all I know. Walter? How well did you know that girl? The doctor gave me strict orders not to talk about the case. For my sake, or for yours. Night wind is quite cold. I think I'd better go inside.
Mr. Diamond, I came in to apologize. To apologize for what? For my wrong conception of you. May I sit down? <laughs> I've got to make a full confession. You know, I let my deductive talents run away with me. I was so sure that in a short time I'd have all the details put together, <laughs> there'd be nothing left but to arrest you. <laughs> well, you hear this, you'll love it. Now, I figured that you were somehow involved with this Stewart girl. Mm, amorously, I mean. That, uh, that she was blackmailing you, and that she threatened to break up your marriage and ruin your career and make your life miserable. <laughs> now, now, in your desperation, you got the crazy idea to get rid of her. At any cost. <laughs> Eventually to murder her. Now, as an intelligent man and a filmmaker, you knew that you had to establish an alibi. Uh, that is, if you want to get away with it. There was the movie Ola. You knew it could run mechanically during your absence and give the impression that you were working here at the critical time. <laughs> and your secretary could confirm it with a clear conscience. <laughs> what do you say to that? <laughs> now, now, you were working in your gloves uh, to protect the film. And suddenly you get the idea to... Uh, you understand what I mean? <laughs> well, I was so carried away with my brilliant conception, I thought that after this masterpiece of thinking and combining, I'd be promoted to replace J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> eh, well, late last night the shock came. The real murderer broke down and confessed. Who? The old man. What old man? Papasha. It'll break in the afternoon papers. You know, you've got to admit, I do have imagination. Maybe my version would make a good movie. What do you say, Mr. Diamond? Huh? <laughs> uh, I've got a rush. Give my best regards to your charming wife. Oh, and tell her our date for this afternoon is off. Good day. Good luck. They probably gave him the third degree, and he just collapsed from exhaustion. He's mixed up, poor guy. Any psychiatrist can get him out of it. Uh, don't say that. It was a premeditated murder, not a sudden impulse. Papasha didn't wear gloves just by coincidence, you know. Hey, boss, did you hear? What? About Papasha. Would you believe it? No, I wouldn't. Uh, Mr. Darman, uh, are you coming back? Paper, mister? Daily Mirror, Citizen Newspaper. Is that the latest? Yeah, the next comes at midnight. Looking for the racing results? No. What's the other paper? Oh, yeah. Keep the change. Oh, thanks a lot. Daily Mirror, Citizen Newspaper. Daily Mirror, Citizen News. Latest edition. Daily Mirror. Citizen newspaper. Citizen newspaper. Mr. Darman, what brings you here? Mr. Collins, I knew I wouldn't find the news about Papasha in the evening papers, but it doesn't make any difference. I would have come anyway. You knew it. Of course. I expected you. I'm sorry I had to use such a cheap and obvious trick. But I wanted to make it easier for you. And for me. Sit down, Darman. Mr. Darman, if you please. You can't deprive me of my dignity just because I have bad luck. Forgive me, Mr. Darman. May I use your phone? Of course. Thank you. I just wanted to tell you, don't expect me. I know, Walter, don't explain. It's the only thing to do. Goodbye, Walter. I'll come to see you.
see you as often as you want me to. <laughs> How did it happen? I remember it as a movie set. I remember I called a painter and asked him to give it a shine, to make it look like real iron bars. How did it happen? <laughs> Movies. Take a handful of sex, mix it with violence, give it some comedy relief, give it the right timing, and a happy ending. I'm sorry. No happy ending for this one.